Good morning. Thank you for joining Prince of Peace on this Bible study. Um, sorry to let you know that we had a few glitches in making the study on live streaming on Facebook. So if it disturbed your plans for the day, apologizing for it. It was not intentional. So we are just recording and placing it and hope next week we could be online and be interactive a little more. So at the end of the session, if you have questions, just let me know either by email or, you know, send it through the Facebook, whichever way. I'll try to answer that next Friday in the session. Okay, so I just record this and let it there because uh, you could have an idea what to expect down the road. Some of you have been with me in the last Bible study on the Gospel of Matthew. We studied that last year because this year the liturgical calendar is we meditate Gospel of Matthew. So we studied this year the Gospel of Mark because next year it is the liturgical calendar Gospel of Mark. So sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, Mr. Kelly does has been working hard to fix the whole thing and then we recorded but then we found we were not on online for some reason that's why we are doing this again and recording it today so thank you for joining us so we come together today to understand the scripture the gospel of Mark gospel according to St. Mark little more better in a clear way and so what we are trying to do is to have an idea what this gospel is and how it is different from the gospel of Matthew we know gospel of Mark wants us to keep the memory of Jesus deeds actions and make it alive through our life remember Matthew was focusing on the words of Jesus. So he collected and systematically put all the words of Jesus. While Mark is giving all the deeds of Jesus, actions of Jesus. Why he wants to do that? Because he wants us to see things through the eyes of Jesus. And so welcome. Welcome to the church. Inaugurated on the Pentecost 33 AD. You know, Church didn't start with Martin Luther. It was 833 AD. Okay. And so, welcome to that church. Started on 33 AD on Pentecost. And so, when we say the scripture, the word of God, the Bible, welcome to the written holy voice of God from a period of 10 you know, thousands of years, 1000 BC to 100 years, the first 100 years of AD, a period where the oral voice of God got into written format. And so thank you for your interest to study the sacred scripture. Welcome to Prince of Peace. And as we continue to understand ourselves in the context of the word of God in this pandemic trying times you know thank you for you giving some time to reading and studying bible so let us pray together the old prayer you might have prayed in school or in Sunday school come holy spirit fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth lord by the light of the holy spirit you have taught the hearts of your faithful in the same spirit help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation we ask this through christ our lord in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen so, my dear friends, the Bible, where do we get that word? 
It's a translation of the Greek word ta biblos. Biblos is plural, meaning to say the books. So it is a collection of books. So how many books are there? Now that is very, very debatable. You know that. And so what is this word of God? Word of God is a living existence. Word, God's words are active and alive. My words are indicative of something. It only indicates. While God's words are creative. And so this creative word, as we understand from the Jewish sacred scripture, is the voice of God. The Torah comes from that Tanakh, and Tanakh and Mikra are two words almost interchangeably used in many times. Mikra means voice of God calling out for a relationship. Remember, Jesus told my sheep hears my voice, a voice calling out for relationship and communion. So mandated Judaism to its members, a Torah cannot be kept in a place if there is nobody to listen to it, listen to this active voice of God. This Torah is a book for the use of home, a family. The Torah for public worship, you know, you would have seen it many times in synagogues and places. It's a scroll. And so this is printed Torah for the use of personal use. And it cannot be kept in a place where there is nobody to read it. Because it's an active voice of God to call, calling for a relationship. And thus, Judaism mandated Torah cannot be kept in a place where nobody is there to listen and meditate on it. Jewish faith is the belonging to God and it became the family of God with Christ, the Messiah. And so the disciples could not keep the word of God in a place where there is nobody to read and meditate. So church insisted Bible should not be in common places, families. It has to be respectfully read and meditated. Second Vatican Council for the first time changed that understanding in 1964 and said Bible could be kept in a family and read as often as possible and somebody should be reading and meditating it on a daily basis, should be studied. And so Bible began to be translated and printed as many languages as possible. So when we say Bible, we say there are two, they are books, but they are divided into two groups. The one is the Old Testament Bible. When we say Old Testament Bible, it is the divine scripture of Jewish faith. Judaism we know it's not a religion per se. So Christianity, we Catholics do have a book of catechism. They don't have it because they have a book of prayer, but it's not having rules and regulations there because they are not a religion per se. They are a belonging. It's a belonging to a covenant. So to understand Jewish sacred scripture, which we call Old Testament, there are two words, Tanakh and Mikra, used commonly. Mikra means calling out for relationship. Tanakh is an acronym for three things. Ta for Torah and Na for Nevim, the prophets, and Ka, Ki, Ketubim, which is writings. So that's the Old Testament, we understand the Jewish Bible, Tanakh. And so we need a little more explanation on that, I understand. So what is this Torah means? Ta for Torah, the instructions of God, how to belong to this covenant. And the Nevim, 
the prophets who continuously told the people how to stay in the covenant and then Ketubim, the writings. While I'm here, I need little attention to uh, how this idea of belonging to God changed in later into Christianity. If you ever been to a Jewish home, a practice in Jewish home, you would see on their doorpost a little cylindrical uh, leather cube thing. It's a mesusa, which is a leather case. Inside, there is a writing of the basic Shema prayer. A Shema is a prayer that starts with O Israel. Remember in Christmas time we have O Antiphons we sing, O Child of Bethlehem, O Come, you know, all those songs. They are Shema prayers of Bible, O Israel, or other things. And so a Shema is the first thing that is spoken to a newborn child. It is the basic prayer. That's why to remind them at the doorposts they have that Shema prayer. Remember, the Shema prayer has three parts. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. You all might be recalling that. O Israel here, that you have to love your God with all your heart and love and strength and all that. The second part is Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 to 21. And the third is Book of Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 to 41. And so it's on a parchment called the cloth used on their homes. So church changed that to the crucifix on the doorposts. That's why in Catholic homes, in hospitals, you would see a crucifix over the doorpost. And these, these three words have been replaced in the Christianity in Catholic church into the angelus prayer you know that three verses of the prayer that scriptural words so a jewish understanding of sacred scripture torah see that you don't see the vowels written there because that's the way this book was written when the reader has to interject the vowels as he or she reads it torah means to teach Look at the next word, more, the teacher. And the, the difference there is just, you know, startling that teacher and teaching, teaching involves both the doctrine and how to live it. This is very basic principle to the Jewish scripture understanding. So traditionally, Judaism taught that Torah has two parts two parts, written or Torah and oral Torah. The written Torah is Tanakh. Torah, the first five books, Pentateuch, and the prophets and writings. So this is where things become very interesting. This is very important to understand the New Testament and the church. Remember Jesus repeatedly had conflicts with the Sadducees, Pharisees, and scribes about the oral traditions. Yeah. And remember, the Gospel of Mark is all about the deeds of Jesus. It's the big word in that Gospel is the word conflict. And that's basically on this issue. That's why we need to have an understanding to know Mark, how this evolves into this book. So, Moses on Mount Sinai received two, oral Torah and written Torah. The written Torah is the Tanakh, Pentateuch, prophets, and the writings. The oral Torah was written later, 300 AD, and that's called Talmud. Hence, in a broader understanding, Torah includes both written word of God and the traditions given by God. And so the written Bible includes the Pentateuch, the first five books, 
and then the prophets and the writings. The traditions includes the Jewish philosophy of life, you know, and then the mysticism, the spiritual living of that, and how to be belonging to God. Then the ethics and ethical literature with it. Then the legal literature. Remember that Jewish belonging after the diasporas? It was all held by the scribes, the legal part of it. The conflicts of Jesus, many of them were about the legality of things. And so together all this make Jewish canon list of books in the sacred scripture. So for an Orthodox Jew, Torah is entire scripture, written and oral, given by God to Moses at Mount Sinai. Now the written Torah, we said the instructions, and the oral Torah, the traditions, are equally important. Hear me. Equally important. Because both are received by Moses at Mount Sinai, given by God. Equally important. This is where the conflicts of Jesus begins with the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. The interpretations of interpretations cannot be equal with the word of God as the argument Jesus makes. Because the mind of God is what has to be checked. And so, for an Orthodox Jew, even today, it is this, equal importance. Later, around 300 AD, this oral traditions, oral Torah, were codified into writing, and it's called the Talmud. And then people had so much need for clarification. So they wrote a written interpretation for the practical Torah, the Talmud. And that oral law interpreted is the book called Mishnah. Mishnah. Then there were more issues. How and why? So they recorded the rabbinic discussions following the writings of Mishnah. And that recorded book is called Hemara. Remember in Supreme Court when judges make a judgment, uh, some of them write a dissent, you know, and that is because of the system that the rabbinic dissents were recorded as with, well, the ascents, and that's called Hemara. So when we say sacred scripture for an Orthodox Jew, it is Torah means Tanakh, the first five books, Pentateuch, Prophets, then the writings, then the traditions, which were written later as Talmud, an interpretation for it is called Mishnah, and then the Rabbini discussions of ascent and descent is called Hemara. All that includes sacred scripture. Bible. That's not here. The Torah for house reading is just the given to Moses by God, the written part. But the oral part is equally important for the faith, living in Jewish faith. So something we need to understand here, to understand this book, what we call the Bible. Remember, Judaism is a covenant people, a belonging, a people of God. How did that happen? So we need to go back to the original part. God created this universe, this whole thing as a garden. Why? Because what was he doing? He was creating an outhouse for himself in his own image and likeness. That you decide to have a child and God blessed you and there came a child in your own image and likeness and so much close to one of you or both of your personalities and behaviors and likings. 
So Bible say God created. The word used in this is Bereshit bara. Bereshit bara. It's his own image and likeness. So God created a family for himself. So the identity of creation is relationship, communion. You know, in a family, you are not simply having a relationship. You have communion with each other. You know the thoughts of each other. You have a relationship with your neighbors, a friendship, and, you know, it's not quiet. The same. And so this relationship was broken. To what extent? Bible says God came to them and they went and hide behind the tree. But still God was talking to them. They were in communication. But they lost the communion. How did they lose the communication? You know, here and there. But then God took the step to re-establish it. But the communion couldn't. Why? Because Bible say they made a cloth for themselves. And what was it? Fig tree. Why that is important in the, given in the Bible? Because fig tree, by the time this was written, fig tree leaf was the permitted clothing for a slave while he or she is being punished. Or anyone being punished. And so Adam and Eve made a cloth with fig leaves and loin cloth for them, meaning to say they enslaved themselves to Satan. To evil. That relationship is completely broken. And God is looking for a way to connect and bring them back. Remember their children, Abel and Cain, killed each other fighting and still God went and protected the killer. The victim is killed and the perpetrator is protected by God because God is trying to reestablish this communion. And we know when things went too far, God destroyed the whole thing. Remember the Noah's Ark? God took some of it. And so he made a new covenant that he will never destroy it totally. And the sign for that is the rainbow. Remember how rainbows formed? And so this God searching for a way Calling out for a relationship is the mikra, is the word of God, a relationship. And so God, from this new people through Noah's ark, called Abram, and changed his name, Abraham, added an H, H, the numerical value is 8, 8 vertical, horizontal is infinity, you know that. And so... Abraham became the father of faith, father of this people of God, infinite, you know. And so from that, two children, remember? Abraham had the Isaac. Isaac had two children, Jacob. Remember the whole story? Yeah. And then one of them had this fight with the stranger at night. And he was defeated. And went to that person's side and said, bless me, don't go away. So he crossed over to that unseen enemy who defeated him and crossed over to him and said, bless me. So the stranger who was God himself blessed and called him Israel because the name of the word Israel is crossing over. So cross over to the side of God. So he's called Israel. And then he had 12 children. They became the pillars of this new people. And they, they are called the fathers of the tribes, 12 of them. And now, fast forward, Moses helped them to get out. And there is a Passover, a covenant made. And then a lamb is killed. The blood is poured on the doorpost. You know all those stories. And so they are 40 years wandering and then made the covenant with God in Mount Sinai. And in that covenant, they became people of God. People of God. And from that people of God, God is trying to create the family of God again. So the Messiah 
the fulfillment of all the prophecies is come. Where did it all start? Genesis 3.15. We call it Proto-Evangelion. The first gospel. Remember when the years of Latin Mass, after communion, we read every time the last gospel. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 18, the prologue. It's called the last gospel. And so the first gospel, Genesis 3.15, is fulfilled in the Messiah, in Jesus. And they became the new Israel. So the disciples of Christ, the Christians, a church built on the apostles, is the new legitimate continuation of the salvation received in Jesus, the Messiah, Son of God. And Jewish sacred texts have fulfilled in the Christian sacred texts. And so the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament, and New Testament illumines the Old Testament, and this became one book. For them, it only has that Old Testament part of it. So the whole point I'm trying to get your attention is Bible, the Biblos, the books. We ask different people how many books are there. It's a very, very debatable issue. So we want to study Mark. So that's why we are trying to build the foundation to know. And so what is New Testament? How many books are there? We know the history of it. Remember Jesus on the, what we call the Lord's Supper on the Passover night. Had the Passover. Remember the 15 steps of the Passover on 11. After the meal, the head of the family looks for the matzah bread, three pieces he had hidden, hide it somewhere, and ask the children to look for while the ladies clean up the dishes. When they are all back in the room, the father will find the where he put hidden these three and take it together, hold it, and make the afikom and prayer. And then he breaks it, give it to Everyone, a small piece from this bread. Three held together in one, Trinity in one, and broken, given to everyone a piece. Then they don't eat anything that night. Then they take the cup, third cup of Passover, and raise it. And then, after the Barak prayer, give it to everyone. That's it. Then the next step is. The Hillel, great Hillel. Hallelujah, the word comes from that word, Hillel. Psalms 114 to 18, 113 is already prayed. And in the New Testament we read, then they sang a hymn. Jew knows that is Psalms 114 to 118. And they went to Mount of Olives, Gethsemane, where he was arrested then trialed in three places, then judged for the crucifixion, way of the cross, death, burial. And we know in the process, Peter denied three times. Only John, the evangelist, could walk through because he was son of the most wealthy fisherman in town. So everybody knew him. So nobody arrested him because he belongs to that group. Then Mark alone talks in chapter 14, verse 51, 52, that there was a young man who ran away naked. It's not physical naked. Any, anything to cover the shoulder is considered nakedness. Remember when you go for a wedding, if it is a spaghetti striped dress, the priest would say, no, 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 you have to cover the shoulder. Yeah, that's the reason. So Mark alone says there was a young man who ran away naked without the shoulder cloth. Why I say all these things is, and that Good Friday after the burial of Jesus, when the body was being taken to the ground from the cross, 
these apostles one after one came back because the crowd left soldiers left so they felt safe to come to the blessed mother and she took all of them home why because the messiah commanded her this is your child this is your son and told the son who was there this is your new mother and so all of them went to her home read gospel of john chapter 19 verses 26 to 27 and then they were there with her she held them together on easter sunday morning we know how that two days changed them remember john and brother wanted to be sitting right and left of jesus in the kingdom now the same john younger ran fast to the tomb and waited there peter to come then peter entered first because he is the leader and then john entered what a change it made two days of training of the blessed mother and these apostles prayed with her all the way until pentecost how do we know because read acts chapter 1 verse 14 they were held together in prayer they had a common person to look and ask what should we do and she had a mandate to take them as her own children and help them to become who they should be so these are all practicing jews we are talking how the new testament evolved and then the pentecost happened the inauguration of the church still all these people use the same synagogue the temple for sacrifices they are practicing jew but they are the disciples of the nazarene the people who live in the new way new way of living and so slowly the tension evolved within the synagogues within the temple and the communities because there are more and more people joining this group then there is a traveling preacher so was confronted and became Paul and then he called himself the apostle of the Gentiles and he went to non-Jewish communities and began to preach and bring people together and they developed this new communities the the confrontation in 50 AD they all came together because the blessed mother died they all were there remember the farthest away was saint thomas he was in india so he came very late and he insisted to see the the body of the blessed deceased blessed mother and opened the tomb and then there is no body there that began the faith of her own being taken to the father in body you know that ascension happened on 40th day now the assumption of the blessed mother that faith evolved so now they don't have the common mother to make the decision so the first council of jerusalem in 50 a.d happens and paul arguing for everyone who become a new creation in christ doesn't have to go through the old way of becoming belonging the circumcision so Paul insists in Christ everybody is equal that circumcision is on the heart not physical need not be and so the first council of Jerusalem in 50 AD decided non-Jewish people are welcomed without circumcision now communities are spreading all over the world new people are joining they have more and more practical questions what is the mind of god on this issue how should we deal with this so they were sending questions or emissaries or ambassadors of the community to the apostles answer us this help us to do what would be the mind of god on this 
and we have the written answers, many of them, in the New Testament. But we don't know the questions. So we answer, we read the answers without knowing the questions. And so the written answers is what we call the New Testament. That is the New Testament. But we don't know the questions. What we kind of understand what would have been. So how many books are in this New Testament? The New Testament, there is consensus. Old Testament, highly debatable, whom you ask. You know? And so, the consensus on the New Testament is easy because the rule of thumb is the death of the last apostle is the end of the canon, the list of Bible. Whatever the last deceased apostle approved as sacred text is sacred text. We know John the Evangelist was the youngest in the group and he was the only one who had a natural death and he died AD 100, so that's it. At his death was the last book of the canon. So New Testament had 27 books. We know all the apostles had their own written gospels. Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Bernabas, Gospel of Philip. You know, all those apostles had, but none of them made the list because that was not approved by the last evangelist, the, the Gospel of John. And so these 27 books, I'm sorry about that. So, the 27 books together made the canon of the New Testament. How about the Let me go back to the slide. Which one do you want to go back to? Because uh, I'll, I'll edit this out. So. Oh, okay. <clears throat> let me do it. All right, let me get this set back up, Father. Yeah. So, um, let me go back to this. Oh, it's not, but it's not broadcasting. I don't know what you think. Yeah, this is the last slide. Okay, that wasn't the slide you want to be on, was it? Yeah, okay. The last slide. Uh, how many books are in the Bible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, yes. That, that's what I have up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you can just, so I'll just, pick, go yeah, just, yeah, just pick back up from there. Yeah. yeah. So, the New Testament has a consensus. There are 27 books. We will continue this next Friday at 9 a.m. Hope we will be live streaming. Uh, you would be able to participate in the class on Facebook live streaming. And meanwhile, this class will be uploaded on church website. So you could uh, watch and put your questions down, either email me or email it to church and you know we will get it from there. If you email me, if you don't have my email ID, it is Father, F A T H E R dot joy at popcatholic.org. And so we will try to answer. So our plan is a 45 minutes class, 15 minutes question answer. You could write your questions on the comment box on the Facebook live streaming, and then I'll get at least answer all of them or many of them as much possible. That's our plan. Hope this helped you. All questions are welcomed. And we will try to figure out the Gospel of Mark the way the author intended and the way church teaches them. So glad to see you. Your interest in Bible. Thank you. God bless you all. Bye now.